Let's talk about how you first got interested in acting. How did this all begin? I got interested in acting because I was a huge fan of uh, movies like James Bond and stuff like that. But what really impressed me about the profession of acting is uh, Mummy Dearest. That movie left an indelible impression on me. Faye Dunaway's performance in Mommy Dearest was quite possibly one of the most amazing jobs of acting I've ever seen in my life. It's just incredible. Since watching that performance, every performance I've seen following that has just been kind of like, well, how does that measure up? I saw that movie as a kid, I saw that movie as a teenager, and I've seen it as an adult, and man, does it hold up. It's such an incredible thing. It's a clinic on acting, and uh, to see it done really, really well and done right, it just, it just inspired me to do it myself. So let's talk about your early roles. Were they on stage then, or did you just do film? Uh, yeah, my, my earliest roles were, were all on stage. Um, I started out working in theater, and uh, I got uh, kind of roped into the, uh, to the School of Fine and Performing Arts at the University of Nebraska. Kind of a, a funny turn of events. Um, I, you know, I'd done musical theater in high school, and you know, it, it was it was fun. It was an extracurricular. It was something to do. Um, the big draw for me was that there were girls I liked in plays, and I got to kiss them. Uh, so slimy as that sounds. <laughs> Uh, but I, uh, but I, I, you know, that's kind of what got me into it. It was just that, you know, it was sort of like, it was a cool way to, you know, kind of participate and be involved and, you know, do your thing. When I was I graduated from high school, and the thing about going to school, I was going to study business. And uh, I, uh, I played baseball in the summer and uh, seriously screwed up my leg. And I wasn't able to play the rest of the baseball season. And it just so happened that UNL was having its uh, first recruiting class for the Fine School of Fine and Performing Arts um, degreed actor program. And uh, Kevin Hoffeditz, who is the head of that program, had seen me um, and, and had heard um, good things about me through my drama coach, uh, Jacqueline Samway, in, uh, at, in Madison High School. And, uh, he was interested in having me participate in the uh, theater camp, um, and after after about a week of the camp, they were pretty emphatic that I study acting and, and make it make it a career. Well, let's talk about your character, Keith. How would you describe Keith for people who haven't seen the film? He's a traveling business professional. Um, you know, cares about himself. You know, but hasn't but is too busy with work and life to really settle down and meet the right person. Uh, that, I mean, meeting somebody's hard, you know, sometimes life is good to us and sometimes it's not. And, uh, you know, Keith just uh, happens to be patterned after a really close and dear friend of ours as well, a uh, former colleague of my wife's, uh, who's, you know, a tremendous individual, really great guy. I thought of him in everyday shooting and I thought of, you know, you know what, would, what would Bill do? And, uh, you know, that's, that was kind of my mantra through, through a lot of the shooting and through a lot of the character development. I just sort of imposed his life experience on the role. For me as an actor, it's the kind of role that I've always wanted to play. A guy who really wears his heart on his sleeve and is just genuine, well-meaning, and full of love and full of life. Hey, I'm sorry to bother you in your condition. Um, I'm looking for books on jazz and foreign film. Can you just point me in the right direction? You like jazz? Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's <laughs> Charlie Parker is one of my favorites. Uh, and, and of course, Sonny Clark, Miles, mm -hmm. uh, Bill Evans, a bunch of others. I have like 3,000 jazz CDs at home. <laughs> Do you like jazz? Yeah, I'm huge into jazz, and I also like foreign films, too. Nice. Say, if you don't mind me asking, 
What exactly happened to you? Friend beat me up. What kind of friend would do that? It's really just a long story. Look, I, I'm from San Diego, but I'm in town on business uh, through the end of this week. And I don't know anybody. And um, you seem like an interesting guy who could use a good meal. Would you go out to dinner with me? Yeah, sure. All right. I don't mind that. I've seen worse. OK. <laughs> but what do you hope audiences take away from Flower Country once they see the finish movie? I hope people enjoy themselves. There is so much life and joy in this movie. It's funny. It's entertaining. And I want people to walk away from this movie understanding that it, it deals with some subject matter that is increasingly um, accepted by the, you know, the large, by the large majority of our population. But there are still those pockets of individuals that are out there that may not necessarily see themselves on the right side of history. I hope that people can come away from this film feeling entertained and laugh while still being able to understand that there's some serious issues being dealt with here. But one thing that this movie does, and does exceedingly well, is it shines a light on those little pockets of bigotry that still exist. Whether it's racial intolerance or sexual discrimination, it's still out there. And it may not be in public, it may not be in the workplace, you may not even hear it in a restaurant, but it's there. It's behind closed doors, it's maybe even down the street, it might even be next door, but it's there. And I think that's a lot of what this movie addresses, and I think that's why it's important that people see it, um, because there is, for all of the strides we've made, for all of the acceptance and benevolence that our society exhibits and the good that people have showed one another, there's still work to be done.